Weathering the weather with Ed. Sometimes he's cranky, sometimes he's goofy, but he's always got a joke. Before I met him, I said meteorology. Hey, guy, that's not for me. But now I'm weathering the weather with Ed. Hello. Oh, you're yelling. <laughs> All right. <laughs> We're going to do a, a beach safety. My goodness, it's loud. Beach safety. Uh, Ten dangers at the beach. Some home pool safety. If you don't have one, don't worry about it. <laughs> Why Miami is going to disappear. All right. And but just first, general questions and answers about water general safety. General questions, that's right. <laughs> All right. Go ahead. Okay. But I'd like to point out the wave behind us. That's a wave. All right, go ahead. Okay. When one is on a boat in the middle of a big lake, yes. why are big towering clouds with wispy tops building up to the west a sign that one should immediately head for shore? Those are called thunderstorms. Are they? With an yes. With anvil tops. And the tops point in. Like this. The tops point <laughs> in. The, see, the cloud comes up like that, and the wind is strong enough. The wind's strong enough, it'll shear the top off, you know. And so the, it's stronger wind going across than it is upward motion, or vertical velocity, if we want to really. <laughs> and uh, it shears the top off, and the front end of the anvil points in the direction in which the storm is moving. So, you, so I'd get out of the water because it's a thunderstorm. Unless you like to live dangerously. No, just get out of the water. Thank you. Thank, <laughs> thank you. you. Thank, no, thank you. No, thank you. No. Oh. Edward Hummel also asks. I put Hummel of where? It doesn't say. Garden of Maine. Garden of Maine. Thank you. When one is on a boat in the ocean, and northeast winds start to pick up with increasing clouds and a falling barometer, yes. which direction should one immediately move in in order to avoid dangerous stormy conditions? I would say directly to the shore, no matter where it is. <laughs> no matter which way it is. Which, which way it is. Yeah. Land ho. Yeah. Yeah. Land ho, yeah. Land ho. All right. <laughs> Took you a minute there. Thank you. All right. What I want to know is, you keep saying when one. What about in two? I was avoiding that. <laughs> oh, I went there. I know. Okay. Next question. Yes. Kira Zanoni. Well, that's close. It's close enough. Yeah. Say so it's from. Uh, oh, she, she lives in uh, Massachusetts, I think, or New Hampshire. Whatever. One of them uh, too. Yeah. They're interchangeable at this point in time. Mm -hmm. Uh, with the overwhelming usage of pesticides and other chemicals used to maintain pristine and manicured lawns and greenways, what are some of the effects these chemicals could be causing on the safety of our water? Well, they could change the pH of the water. And if, if, it, hap if it happens to be in, in a pond, you'll see late in the summer the ponds are all yuck, green garbage. Well, ponds are usually yuck, it's too anyways. acidic. Right They're too. not supposed to be. It's too, it, you should, too many nutrients in there, and uh, if there's nothing in there, it's too acidic. Mm. <coughs> hmm. So you don't want to go for the pea soup on the top. That's <laughs> the pea soup too look. much, and the other one is no good. Okay. All right. All right. Randolph Smith. Better known as RL. RL. In the Washington, D.C. area. Oh, okay. Yes, he's a Marine Corps. He was in the Marine Corps. Okay. So he has uh, a little story behind this first, and then I'll get to the question. <laughs> Thank you. He said, one day he was taking a shortcut and the road was flooded in a small part from a little creek. He drove up the middle of the road, which seemed the highest point, and made it through, albeit the force on the car was significant and did not seem that there was that much wa water, but it was moving fast. So his question is, what action should a person take if they are caught in a flash flood and water comes up suddenly? Say, due to a water main break. Say, due to a water main break? Is that what it said? Say. Oh, say. Well, hmm. uh, first of all, why go down the street? Not safe. You don't Fair really know how, how deep it is, right? Right. Do you really know? No, you, you don't. Know. And uh, I, I just wouldn't do it. Okay. I'm sorry. Unless you have to get there. Yes, but what action would you take if you were caught in a flash flood? If you were caught on the road and the water came up, what would you do? I would. Uh, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I don't know if I'd go forward or not because you don't know how deep it is. Mm -hmm. Right. You try backing up. Okay. I don't think you should get out of the car unless it's really getting bad. Fair like point. The, like the steering column bubbling up on the water. That'd be a sign. Um, his other, the other part of this question is, are there some cases where there is no safety from danger? 
No safety from danger? No safety from danger. You want to explain that one to me? <laughs> Um, he says, I remember seeing a program on the killer typhoon that hit the Philippines. Yes. Go down below and drown, or stay up on top or on high and get blown away by tornado-like winds. It's your choice, then. You said, which one would you... What did it say? I, don't make me read it. Are there some cases where there's no safety from danger? Yes, of course. If your car's getting flooded and you can't get out... That's... There's no went safety there. Or you went into a hole. But, but remember, if, if, if it's lightning, just stay in the car. It's grounded. Better than getting out of the car. Yeah. Especially in Revere. All right. <laughs> Young lady's referring to a tornado that hit Revere yesterday, <laughs> which was July 28th, 2014. Thank first, you. I think it was the first one in that county since... Uh, Ever. Since they've since started they keeping started records. Since they started records. Since 1950. I was going to say that. Okay. <laughs> But, um, you know, uh, you know, uh, they were uh, putting it in context. You like that in in, in Ariz Arizona, in Oklahoma, <laughs> they wouldn't even notice this thing. No, because the whole town disappears. On Nebraska, Iowa, the whole they were town's just like, gone. Oh, what happened? Yes. All right. All right. Uh, his next question: Given the way weather is today, what would happen with a Category Five hurricane like Sandy to New York City? How far up might the surge of water travel? The last one went quite a ways. What was the question? <laughs> Given the way the weather is today, yes. what would happen with a Category 5 hurricane like Sandy to New York? Oh. oh, oh. Or Katrina. Um, Whatever. Yeah. yeah. It, that, that, I don't, the other one really flooded the subway. This would be even worse. Oh. They're actually trying to do something in New York, unlike Miami. We'll get to Miami. Yes, we will. If they still afloat, it'd be really bad. Really bad? Really, really bad. Really, really bad. Oh, yeah. A five is the worst. Are you kidding me? I know that. Worry about the that. building swaying too much. <laughs> All right. All right. Um, next question. From, still from Randolph. RL. Yeah. What is the best course of action in a torrential downpour of some time? Like in Toronto recently, which flooded the subways. Assume one scenario, like a car, another outside, and another in a small building. What's the best way to go? Best course of action in a torrential downpour. I have to be inside. Not, you don't want to be outside. We had a few of those. <laughs> Possibly. <laughs> we had some of those yesterday. Yes, we did. You don't want to go out in that, especially with thunder going on. True. Lightning. The wind was blowing. You got to be inside. Okay. All right. Finally. Yes. One hears of people swimming in the ocean and getting What's pulled down and one? drowned. Yes, they're getting pulled out of the ocean or what? <laughs> swimming in the ocean and getting pulled down and drowned. Yes. What forces are involved in this type of case? They're too heavy. How about a rip current? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. No, thank you. <laughs> Is that the only force? That's all I'm going to do. Okay. Water safety. How about gravity. <laughs> Lee Lavdis has a question from Warner Robins, Georgia. That's right. All right, it's here for Lee. Okay. Okay. How concerned should I be about sharks when swimming in the ocean? Well, if they've been reported around, I would be. Uh, Very see concerned. A lot of, if you see a lot of seals around, then I'd really be, uh, because they like to have food, and it's called seal. And if you've been bathing in blood, you might want to be very, very worried. Yeah, you just attract them. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. Oh, okay. Um, I know the Cape has the problem. Right? Yeah, the Great Whites and all that happy stuff. Well. Alexander Robertson Yes, asks, from Manchester, New Hampshire. Yes. Thank you. Asks, do water filters actually provide any benefits? Wait a minute, we've gone from the ocean to... Well, it's still water safety, all right, technically. All right. Yes, it does. Know. It takes out a lot of the impurities. And uh, depending how what quality is, and depending how bad your water is, it determines how long you can before you have to change the filter. Or some people don't like changing the filters. You just leave it there. They leave the filter there. I wonder if you get a plant growing out of there after a while. That's usually, time is changes. That's usually the time to change a filter. Not if it's a tomato plant. You just keep it going. It's right. very hard to get a tomato plant out of there. Yes? 
Uh, Jeffrey Michel. Mich oh my God, again. It's Michelle. Michelle. Of? You didn't put the emphasis on the syllable. Capel, Texas. Capel, Texas. Good. Thank Not you. Not Koppel. Go ahead. Is it proper to remind Lady Gaga not to wear the meat outfit when swimming in shark-infested waters? Well, that depends. <laughs> I I'd I'll, say no. I would say, don't tell her because we'll get, get her out of here. <laughs> All right, next part. How much flowing water does it take to float a car? We did that already. Thank you, Jeff. I thought I heard. On an <laughs> earlier one. I don't know. Was it? It wasn't that much. No, it's not that much. A few feet and that was it. A couple, yeah. You know, a few feet. A couple feet. <laughs> like the government, a few. <laughs> All right, next question. Is it really necessary to wait before swimming after eating? That could be an old wives' tale, or it could be true. Do we have any old wives to ask? No, we don't. Nobody here again. <laughs> what do you think? It might be because you're exerting yourself. And yeah, and you're, you know, and you're, and you're, you're expending and energy that you don't have yet. And your stomach's trying to... Yeah. Settle it in, yeah. I don't know. I just don't. I don't watch the clock, but I just don't. Eat afterwards. Eat after swimming or wait. Hmm. Hmm. All right. And his last question. Yes, yeah, his, oh no, not his last question. <laughs> Can water spouts really do any damage? Yes, sir. If you're in that boat and it's right there, <laughs> you're in trouble. <laughs> Big trouble, I mean, mister. Because they're weaker cousins of the uh, hurricane doesn't mean they're that weak. Sure. Okay. Eric from Methuen asks. Not Eric. Wait a minute. <laughs> I know this person. What's his last name? Goby? Dalton. 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 Not Eric Dalton. Dalton. Is this uh, your current flame? Yes. All right. Current and eternal. Well, I don't know. Go ahead. How and why do the levels of severity of rip currents change on a day-to-day -day basis, and what aspects of weather affect them? Everything. What was it? Rip? How and why do the levels of severity of rip currents change on a day-to-day -day oh, basis? Oh, the wind is one thing. But also, if you have a storm going offshore, that makes it worse, too. Okay. W those are the only aspects of weather that affect them? That's basically it. Okay. There may okay. be more, but my salary has not increased yet, so. Okay. Is there any way to predict it, like the weather, or is it a day-to-day -day decision? Well, they can do, no, well, there has to be, well, if you have a general s a storm coming, or, uh, then you could say they're going to get worse. And then that day you reasonably the assume floor. they're going to yeah. be higher. Yes. Okay. Kind of like with the weather, you reasonably assume it's going to rain. <laughs> All right. That's it. That's it. We done. Get some more. I'm not ready. All right. <laughs> we, have not ready. we have some beach safety. I don't go to the beach because do I go to? I don't go. No, you don't go to the beach. All right. Some beach safety. Sun, sand, and safety. I remember them. Great That's group. It. Yeah. Every summer, people pack their bathing suits. You can't argue with that. Sunscreen, dip, f dip flop. Oh, flip flop. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were going to say diphtheria. Dip, no, and a good book for a trip to the beach. Yeah, well, the kids are screaming. Hmm. Why do you think they or bring the book? I'm trying to read here. Or perhaps <laughs> where you live, you are fortunate to have beach weather for the greater part of the year. I don't think so. Regardless of how often you get to sink your toes into the sand, the American Red Cross has come, has some beach safety tips and stops steps. I can't read today. I can see that. And steps you can take to make sure you and your family remain safe. Now, will you give us a few steps? Step one. Well, here's beach. Go ahead. Here I'm going to have to read this one. There you go. Step one, beach safety. Swimming in the ocean takes different skills, so before you get your feet wet, it's best to learn how to swim in the surf. You should, only swim, o you should also swim only at a lifeguard-protected beach within the designated swimming area. That does make sense. Fair point. Mm. Obey all ex instructions and orders from lifeguards. Not if you want to stay there, yes. Well, yeah. I mean, unless you want to drown. You know. mm. No, if he says get out, you get out. You get out. You don't stay in. 
while you're enjoying the weather, the water, keep alert and check the local weather conditions. Ah, oh, there's the weather. That's the weather. I knew it would come in. <laughs> it was somewhere in there. Yeah. <coughs> no choking. Make sure you swim sober and that you never swim alone. Swim with sober? You swim sober. Oh, swim sober, yeah. And even if you're confident in your swimming skills, make sure you have enough energy to swim back to shore. I'll buy that. That sounds fair. That, that sounds yeah. fair. It mean, yeah. probably doesn't happen. Not Go often. Ahead. Otherwise, why would they need lifeguards? I hear you have to leave the shore so you can swim back. That's true. Yeah. Other beach safety tips to keep in mind. Have young children or inexperienced swimmers wear U.S. Coast Guard approved life jackets in and around the water. No one should use any other type of flotation device unless they are able to swim. Oh, all right. Okay. Don't dive head first. Protect your neck. Well, that's pretty... They don't do that at the Olympics, do they? No. They dive... Silly question. Why? How do you dive head first at the beach? No diving boards. Whoa. That's a diving into the big surf. <coughs> Check for depth and obstructions before diving and go in feet first the first time. It won't be you can go in head first the other times. Yeah, <laughs> but, yeah if you want to live dangerously. <laughs> exactly. Where's the audience? I don't see anybody. <laughs> oh, hi, hi. All right. We have a. Pr all right, all right. Yeah. Yay. Hey, all right. <laughs> now we're ready to go. There now we we're go. cooking. All right. Okay, go ahead. Pay especially close attention to children and elderly persons when at the beach. Why did you look at me when you said elderly? Oh. Well, if well, the shoe fits. It wear it, yes. Even in shallow water, wave action can cause a loss of footing. I don't need that. I, <laughs> <laughs> I, I can fall down anywhere. It doesn't matter. Are you losing your feet? I'm losing my balance. Oh, I can trip over anything. It doesn't matter. I heard that. Yeah. Keep a lookout for aquatic life. Water plants and animals may be dangerous. Yeah. Avoid patches of plants and leave animals alone. Animals. Animals. Very good. All right. Next, rip currents. Ah yes, rip. I knew him. Related to rip torn. Yes, yes. Go ahead. Very nice family. Would you just <laughs> go ahead, please? <laughs> rip currents are responsible for deaths on our nation's beaches every year, and for most of the rescues performed by lifeguards. Beachgoers should be aware of how dangerous rip currents are and swim only at beaches with lifeguards in the designated swimming area. Why follow, why follow rules? No, of course not. And if you can't swim, don't go to the deep part of the pool, huh? <laughs> keep those keep There's those a lot of people that need to heed that warning. <laughs> keep your feet in the sh shallow end unless you don't want to make it. There you go. Uh, rip currents can form in any large open water area such as low spots and breaks and sandbars or near structures such as jetties and piers. Not, not in a toilet, though. That's, no, not, it's a not a large open water area. A jetty is something that jets out into the water, right? Figuratively speaking. So they call it a, yeah, jetty. a jetty. Yes, okay. But it doesn't jet. No, it stays put. Yeah, all right. Everything else jets around it. Thank you. For safety, be aware of the danger of rip currents and remember the following. If you are caught in a rip current, stay calm and don't fight the current. All right. Swim parallel to the shore until you are out of the current. Once you are free, turn and swim towards shore. What about if you can't swim? Then you're in trouble. All right. <laughs> there you go. If you can't swim to the shore, float or tread water until you are free of the rip current and then head towards shore. Oh, good. <laughs> Didn't they just say that? If you feel you can't make it to the shore, draw attention to yourself by waving and calling for help. Mm -hmm. Stay at least 100 feet away from piers and jetties. Permanent rip currents often exist near these structures. It, piers are what? People who uh, peers. know you? It's like Pe peeping toms. Oh, they peeping? peer into your windows. Good. All right. They're, that's P-E-R. This is P-I-E-R. Oh, yeah. Forgot that part. All right. Go ahead. If someone is in trouble in the water, Get help from a lifeguard. If a lifeguard is not available, have someone call 911. Throw the victim something that floats. <laughs> I'm not going to touch that line. Just don't hit them with it. <laughs> a something life jacket. What, a sponge? 
<laughs> oh, here's a good one. Yeah. A life jacket, a cooler, an inflatable ball, and yell instructions on how to escape the current. I never heard of an inflatable ball. <laughs> I like beach balls. Or uh, basketball. Mm. It's Soccer ball. If you don't like the person, you can stuff it. <laughs> exactly. Right. I've never heard of some throwing somebody a cooler in the water. Well, if it's hot water. Yeah, barely. Yeah. When at the beach, check conditions before entering the water. Yes. Check to see if any warning flags are up or ask a lifeguard about water conditions, beach conditions, or any potential hazards. I think if you see a red flag, it's hurricane. Yeah. Isn't the red with the, the white square in it? And I think two, two red with two white squares is hurricane, and the one red with one white square is a tropical storm. No, what? I don't know. I know the solid flag is... Uh, what do you think I have this uh, memorized? Yes. I don't. I know the you red should. flag is big trouble. Red sky. Well, why is would big you be too. out there? Why would you be out there with a hurricane anyway? What are you crazy? Yeah, you would. I all take right. pictures. You probably yes. All right. Now is that that? Don't put That's it over there because I'll get lost. You're already lost. All right. Now we have ten dangers of the beach. All right. We have rip currents, which we just we we just, just discussed. Did. We have lightning. Which, in, what was that, in California? Venice Beach, they get hit by lightning over the weekend? Yes. That's Laguna it. Beach or something like that. No, Venice, Venice Beach. Venice. Was it Venice? It wouldn't hit Laguna. <laughs> and uh, that's a rarity in the summer. Yeah. It doesn't rain there, but I guess it did. That's true. All right, sharks. I never met a shark I didn't like. Do, 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 do. thank <laughs> you. Head and sunburn. He and sunburn. Tell somebody else about that. Heat and sunburn. What would heat and sunburn? What's the problem? You get a real burn. Yeah. Third degree is worse than first degree, right? Usually. Yeah. Third degree is the blisters and the blackened skin, and it's very nasty. Yeah. Then we have water quality. Make sure, <laughs> make sure there's no floating objects in that water. If there is, you better call if there police. Is, you better not drink it. All right. Now we have a shore break. This is exciting. You know what a shore break is? Um, shore break, go sorry, to the Jersey Shore, shore for vacation. Excuse me? A shore break is an ocean condition when water breaks directly on the shore. Isn't that exciting? Yeah, oh, very exciting. Very nice. We have tsunamis. What is a tsunami? I ask you with 547 left in tsunami. the third. What is a tsunami? Big wave. It's an earthquake. It's, 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 what, yeah. what, it's generated by an earthquake. Mm, underwater earthquake. Right. I'm thinking here. Are you? No, not really. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we did see tsunami, right? We just did tsunami. It's an underwater earthquake that right. generates it's a very large wave. Thank you. And now, here's some here's some jellyfish. You might want to get some jam with this. Here, could you read jellyfish? Because this gets any smaller. I cannot read it. <laughs> are there any peanut butter fish out there? Too? Yes, they are. They're on the back of the jellyfish. jellyfish. Yes. Keep an eye out for jellyfish. Yes. All jellyfish sting. But not all have venom that hurts humans. What do you ask or them? Or humans. You ask them? Yes. Oh, all right. Will you stop with that? Of the 2,000 species of jellyfish, only about 70 seriously harm or may occasionally kill people. Oh, that's nice to know. Yes. When on the beach, take note of jellyfish warning signs. Who was that swimmer who went from Cuba to the U.S.? She kept getting stung by uh, I jellyfish. I have no idea. Man, uh, um, be careful around jellies washed up on the sand, as some may still sting if their tentacles are wet. Oh. Mm -hmm. Tentacles torn off of a jellyfish can sting, too. If you are stung, don't rinse with water, which could release more poison. Lifeguards usually give first aid for stings. See a doctor if you have an allergic reaction. All right. So what's, what am I going to see what's next? Harmful algal blooms. I remember that. Harmful algal blooms. That's disgusting. Uh, popularly referred to as red tides. Ooh. Ooh, it's the red tide. That's a song by the Platters, wasn't it? Red tide in the sun? No. I have no idea. It was red shales. Okay. No, it wasn't. It was red skeleton? Red something. Yeah, red skeleton. <laughs> red something. Um, a s let me see. Are dense populations or blooms of algae that form in coastal waters? Mm -hmm. A small pretentious. Pretentious. Percentage of these blooms can be toxic to marine animals and humans. Mm -hmm. People can get sick by swimming directly in the water and by eating contaminated shellfish. 
That's why they close the area. Yes, they do. Does if it actually look red? I don't know. Yeah, actually, I think it does. I've seen it. Communist. <laughs> the red tide. The red tide, you're a communist. <laughs> uh, if a sufficient amount of toxins are ingested, the results can be fatal. I don't think you'd feel good anyway. No, probably not. Yes. Scientists can forecast the timing and location of blooms. This allows coastal managers and public health officials to make decisions regarding shellfish harvesting and beach closures to ensure the health of both residents and visitors. I don't think I have to worry about this in the winter. No, no. not usually. No. Okay. Uh, marine debris is the last one. That's the garbage that people are throwing out there, right? Uh, items do not belong there. Consumer plastics, metals, rubber, paper, textiles, derelict fishing gear, vessels, and other lost or discarded items enter the vessels, marine. Vessels like bottles? I was no, vessels, I usually think of ships. <laughs> Excuse me, there's a huge ship well, fishing uh, boat watching a shore over, over there. there. All right. Well, how about the whale boat that went out yesterday and stayed overnight? Stayed overnight. Yeah. <laughs> Got caught against a, what was it, a rope? From a, no, yeah, from a uh, lobster trap. Yeah, they got, their propeller got caught. Yeah. That was pretty funny. That's you know, they're getting refunded like 500 bucks. No, they're getting money. Oh, they're getting money. And they're getting, they're getting $500 and the refunded trip. Yeah. Great. Yeah. I don't know if it's refunded trip. Well, anyway, wish I'd been on that. Five hundred dollars, huh? Uh, right. Other lost or discarded items enter the marine environment every day, making marine debris one of the most widespread pollution problems facing the world's ocean and waterways. All right. Often, this debris or litter ends up on our beaches, damaging habitats, harming wildlife, and making it unsafe for beachgoers to walk along the shoreline and swim in the water. Worst thing I can stand. What are you doing? All right, now huh? break the grip of the rip of the rip. All right, one thirty-four. The water looks ready for a swim, aha, but there may be a danger awaiting those who enter. This potentially deadly force is the number one safety threat at beaches. It's called, give me a drum roll. Thank you. Rip tie, oh, rip current, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> rip currents are fast, powerful channels of water flowing away from the beach and out past the breaking waves. Before you realize it, you can be dragged out far from the shore. Rip currents can be easily hard to spot. Can be really hard to spot. Can easily be hard to really spot? Hard. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Down there. <laughs> so exercise caution if you see the following. A channel of churning choppy water. Churning. Is that a singing roof? Yes. An area with a noticeable difference in color. Right, uh, a line of foam, seaweed, or debris moving steadily out to sea and or a break in the incoming wave pattern. I hate that. Me too. If you get caught in one, stay calm and don't fight the current. Again, swim sideways out of the current and parallel to shore, then at an angle back to shore. If you can't escape it, float or calmly tread water. Only one second. The rip current will eventually fade. Try to face the shore, wave your arms, and yell for help. Help. Uh, is that it? Uh, if you see someone caught in a rip current, do not try to rescue them yourself. Instead, get a lifeguard to call 911, second, yell instructions, second. and if possible, throw a life preserver or flotation device. Is that it? That's it. All right. Next week, we'll continue on with this excitement. And I'll tell you. Very excited. One of the, well, I wouldn't go that far. Another one we have coming up is uh, history of climate, and that's a biggie. Climate history. Or climate Sounds history. Sounds good to me. All right. We're also going to take up uh, next week, well, next first, we're going to do why Miami is going to disappear and some other cities. Yay. All right. So f thanks for coming in again, people. Especially George. Thank you. All right. Bye. 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 I don't we, we, we went to the beach. <laughs> now we're back. All right. Oh, are we back? Ah, oh, back to the beach. Oh, not now. We're back again. Oh. <laughs> oh, here we are. Hey, hey, hey. Oh, starring.